Okay, so today we will start with statistics. So DA using R. So I have prepared a slide for statistics. So it's inside PPT, inside statistics.pptx. Mm -hmm. So uh, why statistics? So why do we study statistics uh, and why it is needed in data analysis? So we might have that question first. So why we need statistics is because while doing data analysis, we will hear uh, different statistical terms like mean, median, standard deviation. So it's not only limited to mean, median standard deviation. We have uh, like calculating data score, p-value, all even several statistical terms we will hear when we do data analysis. And also in whenever we read a research paper, so, so every analysis will have some statistical terms, right? So okay. the statistical terms may include may include mean which may denote using mu sigma for standard deviation variance this is square for sample mean you will say x bar right so all these terms are very common terms and we need to have a good understanding of these terms also later we will use j score j score we will use p value. So all this terminology we need to understand so that uh, so that we can interpret and do analysis on basis of uh, these values. Like we can get to know what if we have a good understanding of this term. So these are the very basic terms. So if we have this understanding, then it will be easier for us to do analysis. So this terminology would assist you even to read research papers, even several research papers, you will have mean, median, mode, standard deviation. So you will have formula like root 100, the standard deviation is x minus mean divided by n minus one. So this is the standard deviation formula. So what what the mechanism of, of this formula? What, what is this formula doing? So if we have that understanding, then it would be easier for us to interpret and do analysis right mm -hmm. so that's why uh, statistics is very important for us to start with data analysis so in the statistics we have two terminology like a uh, descriptive statistics and inferential statistics so descriptive descriptive statistics is uh, summarizing information by means of graphs like a, using a pie chart, bar graph, or numbers like a mean, median, mode, or finding correlation. So summarizing the information by means of graphs or number is what we call descriptive statistics. And what is inferential statistics? Inferential statistics is drawing conclusion about a population based on limited number of cases like uh, for example you can say like analyzing data of all citizens of america of australia all citizen means uh, overall population based on a sample of relatively few australian citizens so based on sample data if we analyze and find the overall population data that's what influence in statistics is so drawing conclusion about a population based on sample data. So through sample data, if we if we are able to find the overall population distribution, then that is called inferential statistics. Yeah. So 
the level of measurement like you can say so these are the level of measurement so whenever we have a data like uh, for example for example uh, Statistics So, so this is in this is your raw data. Raw data means uh, you have pulled this information from somewhere. So this is your raw information. So suppose, for example, the raw information contains uh, these are these are your variables. So age is so player one is of eighteen is year he's eighteen years old. His weight is seventy one point six kg. He has not scored any goals, and he is from certain team, and his hair color is bond okay and similarly we have second player whose age is this and so on and his hair color is black so here what looking at this data okay so what we can say is what what we can say like what is your hair color okay. so we have hair color we have age, we have weight. So your hair color is specific, like it is either bond or either black or either other, right? So your hair color is categorical variable. We say categorical variable. Categorical variable means uh, the variable that is Either you can say either yes or no, okay, or you can say have certain category, like a person is smoke or no smoke, okay. So it can be like for in the, in this case, you can here can be black or moon or, or other. Okay? So it has some category. So that's what is categorical variable. So it has some category, right? So smoke, non-smoke, three types of either person is smoking or not smoking. Yeah. If person like something, then yes. If he doesn't like, then no. So that's the categorical variable. Okay. So your age is 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 it can be 18, 19, 20 year, five month, right? So it can be 21 year, 21 year, two months. So the so this is your, uh, this categorical variable is also called discrete variable. So discrete variable, okay? And if you are, if for example, age can be of 20 years, five months. So we have some decimal point here. 20 year can be two months. So whenever we have a decimal point, so this is, this is my continuous variable. Continuous variable, okay? So these are the types, like uh, if you look at your data set, so for example, a goal. So goal can be either one, two, three, four, right? So this is again your discrete variable, discrete variable. So so all these are your weight. Weight can be 14 kg, 14.5 kg, 16.6 kg, right? So all these are, so, these are your, your continuous variable. Continuous <coughs> variable. Okay. So, all these are all these are level of measurement. Okay. So, so, uh, so we can we will say if your data is data is nominal. Okay. So, when data is nominal. nominal then that means there is a difference between 
two value like uh, two two groups you can say for example gender can gender is a male or female so there's a difference uh, between one gender to another so that's a nominal nominal category we can say okay so whenever we have a ranking grade so whenever we have an order that's there we called ordinal category okay so here uh, is interval of football players so that will become your interval category okay so for example for example here here we have is if we make an interval of ages can be like 0 to 15 year 15 to 20 so this is this will again be your interval category interval quantitative uh, interval measurement you can say interval okay and even the ratio means uh, ratio is like your height where where zero is zero is meaningful means a person can have a height of zero like he will have certain height so he, so the uh, zero is meaningful there like a, a newly born baby we will have some height right so there is some she will not be or he or she will not be of zero height or zero so zero is meaning meaningful there right mm -hmm. so that's where that's what we call ratio okay so in quantitative we have two variable like you said discrete and continuous okay so we need to oh, so can you can you please explain no, nominal so nominal is like a difference between two groups like for example gender okay gender can be either male female right so there is a difference between male and female, right? So that's nominal, okay? And or, ordinal is the ranking, for example, grading or, oh, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. So that's the difference between uh, nominal and ordinal. Mm. Okay. And difference between interval and ratio is, in interval, your zero is not meaningful. Okay. okay and in ratio zero is meaningful okay okay and in quantitative we have two types of variable one is discrete another is continuous so discrete means uh, your value is fixed okay so number of goals for example so it can be one two three four five okay and in continuous your value is not fixed so for example height of a player can be five foot five inch or you, you can even say a temperature temperature can be 15 degrees something celsius right mm -hmm. so if you have some uh, decimal point in your data you can say decimal or infinite range of value then that is your continuous variable yeah so looking at this data set looking at this sample rows here what we can say so this one is your bond black Learn. Learn. so this one is which uh, which which one it falls this is a categorical right mm -hmm. but in which one it falls it nominal or ordinal so this is ordinal oh. Oh. so ordinal means it should follow some ranking oh. order oh, yeah. so okay. it should be nominal right yeah, so this is your nominal, okay? Likewise, your goals, zero, one. So this is, again, this is quantitative, mm -hmm. right? So this for this goes in a discrete variable, okay? So if we take an interval, for example, uh, weight between something to something range, then that, then that will fall under interval, okay? So, if, uh, so here, for example, your here is your categorical variable, right? So mm -hmm. this is this is categorical, uh, mm -hmm. categorical, uh, nominal, nominal variable, right? So, for example, if we if we need to know how many 
players have bond here okay mm -hmm. so for example here one two three people so three three people have have bond here so how many have black one two three has black and one has other okay so here uh, this is this is how we say this as a frequency like how many i have how many what's the frequency of bond so we can say three what's the frequency of black and say three what the frequency of uh, other one so total is seven right and if we need to calculate percentage you can simply three divided by is seven into hundred so that's 24 percent so again uh this this number is fixed so we need to give absolute okay so this is how we have the percentage and cumulative percentage means uh, the first one will remain as is and second one will be first plus second like this so, on. so this is the cumulative percentage okay so your weight uh, so so here we have uh, we know like this is this is your categorical variable so we 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 added frequency here right but but in case of weight because every player have different weight right mm -hmm. so so every so so every player have different weight so the frequency will always be one right so oh. for every yeah so this would not make any sense because it's already given in the data set right mm -hmm. yeah so so uh, making mm -hmm. writing the frequency will not make much sense here so mm -hmm. what we can do we can say here like less than mm -hmm. like less than 60 k 60 kz okay less than 70 less than 70 belongs to how many frequency we have less than 70 so it's one right Hmm. So uh, between seventy to eighty, between seventy to eighty, we can say. So between seventy to eighty, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six we have. Okay, so this, this is now, this is this is now, we have changed this continuous value. So this is your continuous variable, right? Mm -hmm. Because the number are ranging. <laughs> So number are ranging. That's why this is your continuous variable. Okay. So so uh, this this terminology we should, we should always keep in mind. Discrete variable. Continuous variable. Discrete variable slash categorical variable okay continuous variable so continuous variable is if we have infinite number of range of range value so for example your weight weight is temperature okay so your discrete will be your hair color goals right so these are so these two terminology are very important uh, to know discrete and, and okay so discrete can be your goals you can be status for example status smoke or not smoke mm -hmm. so if we if we have learned about in machine learning so a discrete variable, discrete variable are all, all goes to classification module, mm -hmm. classification module, right? Mm -hmm. And your continuous variable all goes to regression module, right? Mm -hmm. Regression module, yeah. So here your weight is uh, discrete or continuous. Continuous. Yeah, so it's continuous variable. So we have converted continuous variable to discrete variable, mm -hmm. right? Right. Yes. So this this one is uh, which uh, which discrete variable? 
either it's a uh, it's ordinal ordinal or nominal right now we have converted this 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 one is our ordinal because because we have fixed In order yeah. yeah fixed order right so less than 70 is this greater than 70 is this so this is ordinal okay so ordinal categorical variable right mm -hmm. not quantity okay so this is how we distinguish like even the is can be is is will not will not categorize this is because a person of similar is we can have uh, information like for example here player five and six has two two rows that belongs to same is so is cannot be we can we don't need to convert this to categorical okay also converting this uh, to categorical we lose information if we convert continuous to categorical we lose uh, lose some information how do we lose information is because suppose for example in nsw in nsw we have salary of people less than 50000 k per year okay greater than 50 but less than 100k okay and 100k plus okay so if we categorize the salary based on this three okay and less than three means like a, let's say low income low status okay low status uh upper status okay and high status high status let's say if we give this as high status so suppose if someone has 51k 50, if someone is earning 51k then he falls under upper class people right yeah. but but and even the person who has 99k also falls under also upper falls class. under upper class so here we can see we are losing some information because this category this category the person who has 51k should fall under or should be closer to lower state mm -hmm. people right so yeah. here we are losing some information here right so this should be should be should belong to lower class people right mm -hmm. and, but however however this has been converted into upper class right so so it's not a good practice to convert uh, numerical value mm -hmm. yeah continuous value to categorical okay but we do because uh, for, to make sense of data we do because we cannot analyze this data all at once right so for that we we sometime convert a continuous data to categorical data okay so right now just i am showing you like how we can convert continuous data to categorical data mm -hmm. so here you will have uh, terminology like uh, these are all your variables variables these are all your cases okay so this this whole data is considered as data matrix we say this as a data matrix so we need to have good understanding about what is nominal uh, like looking at data the which variable belongs to nominal which variable belongs to ordinal which uh, which one is discrete which one is continuous so we should we should be able to distinguish that okay, okay. okay so so now for example okay so for example we have this data we have uh, football players who belongs to Europe. So we have 250 football players who are from Europe, 16 who are from North America, 16 who are from 26 who are from South South America. So here, what would be the best uh, best graph to visualize? So like, it's easy to show in pie chart or in bar graph. Uh, only that much. It would be easy in pie chart. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense because once the uh, the country uh, size increases, 
in that case it will be difficult for us uh, to visualize in pyjam mm -hmm. and then we move to bar graph mm -hmm. okay. okay so if we have this category like for example if we for five when we have five countries right so mm -hmm. here it's easier for us to visualize information using pyjam right here we can clearly see that the highest player belongs to Europe, right? Yeah. So we can easily see like uh, most of the players are from Europe. Okay. But however, if, if the number of countries are like 10, 20, 30, then it's not good to use it's okay? In that case, in that case, we use uh, bar graph. Okay? So bar graph is So one difference between bar graph and line chart is, series. bar graph will show you only the percentage, okay? And in bar graph, you will see the numbers. Okay? So here you will see it's uh, the numbers lies between 240 to 300. Whereas in pie chart, if you go in pie chart, it, it always shows you in percentage. So we can see like uh, here, you can simply see, you can simply say like, 70% of the players are from Europe. So this gives you much uh, cleaner cleaner information, you can say like, gives you a precise percentage, but however in bar graph, it gives you the number, it doesn't give you the, the percentage. It doesn't give you the percentage. It says you the number, so like uh, an add label here. So this one belongs to Europe, 280 players are from Europe. It doesn't give you the percentage, okay? So two differences, two main differences are, two main differences when to use bar graph or when to use pie chart. Let me write it down um, to remove this. So, um, so first reason is the pie chart, pie charts, pie chart are used when we have less number of categories. For example, here we only had, only had four, five countries so so it's so it's better to use to use pie chart okay so if the number of of categories increases we use bar graph Okay. Pie chart. Pie chart is always is always shown in percentage. Whereas bar graph is is always shown in numbers. Okay. So that's the main difference between pie chart and bar graph okay so mm -hmm. and another thing to note is for for both pie chart for both pie for, for both pie, pie chart chart and bar graph bar graph we need to have two variable we need to have two variable Okay. Very well. Here in, in our example, we had country and its frequency. Right? So we need to hold, we need to have two variables. Okay. So for example, now
Now let's say uh, we have height of only we have height of the players. Okay. And now we want to visualize the height. Okay. So what's the maximum height? What's the what's the maximum and minimum height? How is the height ranging within the players? Okay. So for that, what we need to use, we need to use histogram. So we go in data analysis. Here we have histogram. Okay. So input range will be this range. Okay. And output, I want to have this output here. And you can chart output here. Okay, so it will automatically create the beans. Beans is like uh, giving the range, like uh, you can say like 176 is two. Okay, so between 176 to 189.5, 89.5, it's it adds the frequency. Okay, so between 189.5 to 205. So it's so it gives you the frequency within that range. Okay, so this frequency can be changed, but uh, this has been automatically generated by Excel. So so let, let us remove this. Uh, here, on my let's just remove this cap. So now what we can say uh, the the highest height is the same for 203, right? So, so between 203, we see maximum layers of, uh, of, of height 203 centimeters. So this is, this is in centimeter. So you can say that it's between, so maximum, maximum layers have height uh, from 200, 203 to 216. Can say like that. Mm -hmm. So here, what we can see, uh, two hundred three is eleven, right? So, so two hundred three. Um, so this should fall. Uh, two hundred three will take this when. So it's it is between one hundred eighty nine point five to two hundred three I think. So it's eleven. So I think this will include this two value. One two. Three. Four five. Move this one six seven. This will not be good. This will be important. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one was nine. This one will also be ten level. Yeah. So these are these are the value that is shown here, the two hundred and three, because between greater than one hundred and eight nine point five, but less than two hundred and three is eleven. So we see players of maximum of uh, height that ranges is between one hundred and ninety to two hundred and three centimeter. So that's shown here, the middle. Okay, so that means like uh, what can we say about this is
so your histogram is something like this, right? So, so if you have a histogram that is something like this, okay. So here you can see it some some way like. So your highest point is in the middle, okay, and then it's decreasing. So if if the here histogram is something like this, then this is this is your symmetrical. This is symmetrical distribution. We say this as a symmetrical distribution. Distribution where your mean mean is equals to median is equals to mode. Here we say. So what is mode? Mode is the highest point, right? So here the highest point is in the middle, right? So this is your highest point. And your mean is also at this point, is also at this point, right? So this is the highest. So here the highest point is near about two hundred and three. Mm. Okay. That's the highest point. So in that case, your mean median mode is is equal, and that is symmetrical. So here this 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 histogram is symmetrical, right? So likewise, if it was a draw histogram of uh, this data. Here we can see. So here, let me remove this gap. So here we can see the height is mostly concentrated at like uh, mostly the players are ranging from 176 okay. centimeter to 189. Right, right because here is the highest point so this so this histogram is something like this so this histogram is something like oh sorry so it's something like this right so it's like it's deviating towards right so this is this is this is right right skewed. So here we this we say this as right skewed. Okay. So here in right skewed you will see your mean is always greater than mean is always greater than median. Okay. So here we can see here the middle point is here somewhere here, right? So it's always here. And when once we go, this, if we check for this data, go and analyze. So this so here. So this is let me remove the gap. So this is your something like this. Right, so this is your, this is your left skewed. 
okay so mostly data is the mostly your data is concentrated towards this point okay this point so that is that is what we call left skewed so if you even google in skew yeah so if you look at this diagram you can see here the symmetrical have mean median and mode all are equal okay so the left is skewed this is right is skewed okay so that right skewed is often called positive skewed and left skewed is also called negative skewed okay so here what you can say so in your in left skewed your mean is always less than median okay and in right in right skewed your mean is always greater than median so what's the use of uh, left skewed right skewed symmetrical why we are learning this we are learning this because uh, we need to look at our data. Okay, for example, for example, in a class, if you say in a class, average height of a student will be, let's say, five feet, five inch, right? Mm -hmm. Five feet, four inch, or five feet, two inch, or five feet, five inch, right? So most of the student will have height in that range, right? That means that height, that height will have the highest value right so okay. for example in, in highest so maximum strength will have a height of of five foot five foot five inch so that would be the highest point in a okay. class right okay. and even in, in very low people very low strength will have a height of six inch right yeah six and even you can say 5.5 means that it will be less here this will be negative so very few people will have six feet height, right? Mm -hmm. That that means here this will range here, and very 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 few few people will have seven feet height. Mm -hmm. Very very few rare. So you can see this this symmetrical distribution applies in our real life. Okay. So if your data is symmetrical, that means your average will always have the highest in the class five feet five inch will always have the highest uh, frequency so five feet five inch student if you look look in a class in a class it's, it's out of 100 out of 100 five feet five inch will be 80 okay five feet nine inch or six feet will be like five okay and uh, you can say seven will be very there one or two okay so in real world, your average will always have highest point, okay? And, and your rare cases will always have low value, okay? So in real life, your data will always be, you need your data will always need to be symmetrical, okay? You should, you should not have a data that is concentrated either on left side, okay, or right side, okay? So in real world, we should always have data that should be that should, that, is, that is concentrated on middle, like um, in like symmetrical view. Data should always be symmetrical. If not, if your data is not symmetrical, if your data is symmetrical, then we always take mean. Mm -hmm. And if your data is not symmetrical, like it's left is skewed or right is skewed, then we always take median. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because your mean will always be either right skewed will always be greater and left skewed will always be less so we will take median if, if my if your data is left skewed or right skewed yeah. so why does this why it's, it's why it is not good to have left skewed or right skewed is because you're in the real world scenario your data should always be symmetrical right so we will not have cases where your your data is divided towards one particular uh, line, or you can say like one particular skewness you will never have in your data, right? 
So that's why your data should always be symmetrical. Like, what if? Uh, what if? What if mean, yeah, what if, we 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 can have cases where your data is in the right skewed mm -hmm. or left skewed. If that that looks varied, then we will not take mean. No, we'll be taking. So, mean. so average in that case, your average will always be median. Median. Okay. Your average will always be median if your data is left or right skewed. But when your data is symmetrical, your average will always be mean. Uh, and one example of one real world example of uh, of right skewed can be like a, a wealthy person, wealthy person with high income, even can be. I'm not sure whether it's right skewed or left skewed, or even to check a wealthy person who has high income will be deviated to one, for example, wealthy people of certain income. Will have uh, will have really high range and and for poor people it will be continuously decreasing. So and to look at one example for the right skewed and left skewed. Okay, we will do that example. Okay. The distribution of income. The distribution of income is your uh, right skewed. So, if, so if the distribution of household income or position is studied, for example, for ranges between five thousand to twenty-five thousand, most of the citizen falls in the group between five thousand to hundred thousand which follows the bulk of the distribution towards the left side of the distribution, which is the lower side. However, a couple of individuals may have a very high income in millions. So this makes the trail of extreme values at high income. Income exceeds towards the positive or right side, right? So what does this mean is, so in the case of right skewed, uh, a family income, let's say, start with 50,000. Okay, so this is 51,000, so on, 52,000, 53,000, 100k thousand, right? 100k thousand. So 50,000 to 80,000 people will have maximum wealth, like they will have maximum people, maximum people, uh, maximum average people, average people will have the income between 50,000 to let's say 80,000, right? So highly wealthy people who is very rich will have income uh, greater than 100K, right? Mean, what does that mean is the average people, money is always concentrated here in this range, in this range, okay? So highly, uh, who is very wealthy, very rich, who has a uh, money greater than 10K will be very less, okay? So it's here. So it will be very less. So, so this highly wealthy people is an example of the right skew, right skewness. So yeah, we can we can can look at this because in an interview, the interviewer will ask you, uh, he will ask uh, the real world. Give me a real world example of skewness. So it's good if. You yeah, if it's good if you go through this this example. Mm, I will. Yeah. Uh,
So, like sure. in, uh, in real world, like scenario, like if 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 we have to, uh, if we have to represent our like conclusion uh, by a diagrams, like they would ask like, show me the like bar graph or like they will they will point at any specific graph or like we have to choose the best way to show our results to them. Like we have to choose the best way they will because uh, the client will not uh, client will think of uh, like you or me to be an expert in visualization which mm -hmm. graph would suit best for their uh, work so they will only give us the data so they will only okay. give us the raw data like this okay mm -hmm. and our task is to better show them and uh, visualize the information and so them in a way that is clear to them, to, that is clear to the client. Okay, so in in that way, uh, we need to make sure if we use histogram or pie chart or bar graph, we can explain that to the client. Okay, so, so it do, depends. It depends up, upon our need, like our requirement, what we want to do. So if the client will never tell you uh, do so a bar graph or line chart or histogram. It's, it's our uh, knowledge and our skills of uh, drawing that graph. What, what about the questions? Like they, they, would, they will ask like, uh, this, is, this is the data and like, uh, if, if it's like, uh, for example, if it's like real estate data, then like how, how, they, how they ask um, to do the job, like they need, so something and like I understood yeah. what what you mean. Like uh, once they give us the data, and then we need to start exploring our data. Like how was the range? Right now, what we did, we looked at uh, what we looked at the player's height. So looking at this this visualization, we can say like my player's ranges from one hundred seventy-six centimeter to uh, 216.5, right? So my player's height in centimeters is from this to this range, okay? So this is the exploratory analysis that we did, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and based on this uh, analysis, we can come up with few findings, okay? So based on this analysis, we can say that in this histogram, what we can say, so this in this histogram, this one is weird because all people are ranging in this height, mm. 230 centimeter. But here you can see one weird uh, number which is excluded, right? So this weird number, why this weird number is coming up here? Because here we can see the maximum uh, players have their height less than 203 centimeter. Mm. So this this one looks something weird, right? So why this is showing up? Okay. So the weirdness, this is, this looks like an outlier. We can say this as an outlier, because that is not normal. So some weirdness in data or what client need, like for example, looking at raw data, they want to answer a few questions, like how many people, how many players have black hair, okay? How many, how many players scored, which player scored highest goals, okay? So what's the weight, average weight ranging uh, for several players? So looking at this data, they can ask some hot questions. And based on our analysis, we try to give them answer, answers. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, right now we are just, we are just starting. Like, uh, you will get more sense once we start uh, the so this was so we need to have uh, once you look at your data like you should be able to explain what is categorical which one which field is uh, categorical which field is continuous which field is discrete is it nominal is it ordinal ordinal are we uh, converting continuous data to categorical data okay so this thing we need to have we need to have this all in our mind once we look at data. So this field is continuous variable, this field is categorical. 
So to visualize this thing, this information, we need to use histogram. So this the histogram would be a good preference for us. Okay. Okay. Looking at this data, we need to use pie chart. We need to use bar graph. So that should come up in our mind immediately by looking at data. Okay. Then uh, the measure of central tendency is is mode. Mode means the highest frequency. So highest frequency and median is the middle value of observation. Order that is that we need to do ordering based on smallest to largest. If we do an ordering, and then take the middle value, then that is median. Okay, and mean is simply average. Some taking some and dividing it by total number. Okay. So for example, for example. One, 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 two, two, five, seven, nine, nine, eight. Here is a here is seven. Okay, so your mode here becomes mode is the highest of going digit one. This is one. Your median median is we sort this in ascending order one, 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 two, two, five, seven, seven. Eight, nine, and we take middle value. One cross, 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 cross. So middle value is everything is cross. The means middle value is here. Two plus five divided by seven divided by two. Three point five. Three point five is your median. And what is your mean? Mean is simply sigma x divided by n. Means this plus 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 this divided by one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven. That's it. Median. So so here, if we if we want to determine how sympathetic do a do you think a person is, and we need to give a scale between zero to ten? Here, the respondent one to ten. Here, you can see. So the mode will be. We we have a function mode in Excel. So mode is the highest of your digit, digit, which is eight. And average keeps this. This is your mode. This average function will give you the mean, and median function will give you the median. Okay, so this is your board. This is a medium. This is a So when should we use mean? When should we use mode? When should we use median? So here in this graph, so this is a categorical information, right? So if we have a categorical information, so here what would be your mode? So which uh, your mode will be? Here your mode will will be Europe, right? So because Europe has highest frequency. Right, so your mode is Europe. Okay, so mode will mode applies mainly when you have categorical information. Okay, and uh, our mean and median mainly applies when you have a uh, numerical information. For example, so uh, imagine you are sitting in a canteen of a football club, let's say. Okay, and you want to compute mean and median income of all people present there. Okay, so suppose uh, your salary is something like, or your or my my salary is something like two hundred k, and the other bartender has a similar range of eighteen thousand k, and some guest even has a certain range of nineteen thousand k. Okay. Yeah. 
suppose uh, some famous people came to the, to the canteen some famous player came to have uh, something in the canteen and of course his salary will be in in million dollar okay so suppose is something something like a uh, 200k let's say okay so in this case it's 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 good to take median why because because we can say we, the mean will give us the average of all the four people right but this one is exceptional right this one is exceptional this you see this is exceptional often even considered as outlier we even say this as outlier this one is exceptional so in in such case it's good to take mean uh, median sorry okay so in this case if we, if we take median okay so so if you look at this distribution even if you plot a histogram so it 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 should be it is deviated towards right right because mm, yeah. yeah so it's deviated towards right so i say it like uh, when you have a right or if deviation it makes sense to take median right mm. it, that's why that's why 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 does it make sense to take median because it it is deviated towards one particular point right so one particular skewness is uh, it's either left skewed or right skewed so if it's it's deviated towards one particular point it's good to take median yeah. okay so in, in that case we take median otherwise if it, the ratio is similar we take mean okay yeah. so this was a mean mode median and once we have mean mode and median so we should we should now be concentrated on measuring the variance so what is variance variance means like a difference between this salary and bartender salary your salary or my salary plus bartender salaries so how much variance is there in the data okay so once we know mean mode and median the another topic that would be of our interest is to know the variance okay so if we compare this variance the exceptional uh one ex exceptional people is if we check the variance of this versus all other value we can simply say there is a high high deviance in the data there is a high variance in the data okay so the so to measure variance we have three we can measure the variance either through interquartile range or through variance or to standard deviation okay one way of measuring variance is taking range right taking highest minus lowest we have studied this during our school days taking range right range uh, means taking max max value minus mean we usually do right mm -hmm. max minus mean simply this minus the minimum here is 18 right so this but uh, the downside of using range is it takes extreme value right so here we can say this is exceptional this is an outlier we need to exclude this this portion right so taking taking range will not give us the appropriate variance because it is taking the maximum value right so so we don't usually take range so range is a measure of vari variability in the data but we prefer taking interquartile range iqr interquartile range so what interquartile range does is you suppose if we have a number suppose we have one two three six seven eight nine okay so it first one firstly it takes middle value one two three four five six seven 
fifteen. So fifth one. This is the middle value. Okay. So the middle value is always due to this is median. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the middle value from here is this. Okay. And middle value from here. Is this this minus this plus this divided by something? It's somewhere between here, okay, seven point five, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Somewhere here. So it's Q two is here, Q one is here, right? So interquartile range is I Q R, okay, interquartile range. This gives us the variance variability in the data. This is equals to Q three minus Q one, which is. Seven point five minus three. Okay, so this gives us this gives us the variance. How much variance we have in our data? Okay, so to calculate Q one, we use quartile dot exe and pass here the which quartile we are trying to calculate. It's first or second or third. Okay, so this gives us the first quartile, and then here we give three, which means third quartile. Okay, and IQR is simply Q3 minus Q1, Q3 minus Q1. Okay, so this is your quartile range, and anything that is above this uh, value, Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR, is your outlier. Okay, so Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR. And Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR is your outlier. Okay, so here we don't see any outlier because we don't have any value ranges between here this to this, right? So if so to represent this information, so to represent this information, what we usually do, we usually do a box plot. Mm, yes, box. So this is your lower quartile Q1, Q2, Q3, and this is your upper upper whiskle. Mm -hmm. And uh, anything above and below is your okay. outlier. Okay. So if you plot this information inside here, insert and you can see here so here we can see we don't have any outline okay but if i change the extreme value here to 42 let's say 100 uh -huh. you can see here one is one outline is same here okay? Okay. so likewise if we plot this box plot So here, so so here uh, Q one is nine, okay, which means here somewhere here nine, less than in here this point, and your median is here, which means thirteen somewhere here this point, mm -hmm. and your Q three is here, this point is your Q three, somewhere near here this point. Okay, so your box plot also shows uh, the uh, how your data is ranging, right? So here you can see this, this comparing to this and this box plot. What we can say, this the first box plot has uh, more variance, right? And this one has less variance, right? The second one has less variance compared to first one. Right, and even the mean, uh, even the median is less for first chart. So median is somewhere around 14, 13, somewhere around 13. But the median in, in this box plot is somewhere around 15. Okay, so even in box plot, this box plot is the one in the right. This box plot is symmetrical. Okay, but this one is. Distributed towards left, 
okay because we don't see we uh, this line in the middle okay so if your box plot is something like this then this is your symmetrical box plot equally spaced equally divided equally spaced here right what if your box plot is something like this then this one is i don't know if this is left this is either left or right check confused so it's either left or right okay so if it's something here so here we can see the difference so this says this can be either left or right okay check so this uh, box plot even gives shows you how your data looks like okay so it, it says whether your data is symmetrical or not is even is is there any skewness in your data or is there any outlier in your data all all that we can figure out through box plot and and box plot is also used to uh, compare so box plot is also used to compare your categorical and continuous variable okay so what does that mean is for example uh, we will do that practically mm -hmm. but let me give you a bit of a more example so so if we have data something like this so so if this is your suppose this is the height okay so height is is starts from 270 meter 100 500 800 850 okay so so based on this height we need to figure out so it's a male here for female female okay so we can look at our box plot And if this one is somewhere here, okay, we can say that average height for male is male and female is symmetrical, right? So it's somewhere similar. So, so to visualize, to even to vis to visualize, this one, this one is your continuous variable, right? So height can be 205 centimeter, 25.8, some it can be. So this is a continuous variable. And this is your this is your discrete variable, right? So to visualize a continuous, continuous and discrete variable, we often use box plot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So this is one case of using box plot. Uh, yeah. So. So. Uh, so if you only have one variable, so only height. In that case, we use histogram. Histogram. So we want to see how the deviation in height. So what's the height ranging? So then we use a histogram. We can also use a box plot, but generally for categorical information, categorical and numerical comparison, we use box plot. So even, even representing one particular variable for one continuous variable, for example, in here we used box plot to represent one particular range of value, right? For percentage of body covered with tattoo. So even for one particular variable, we can use histogram or box plot, or even box plot we can use. Okay. So for one, if you have one variable, so we can use both histogram histogram or box plot okay so if we have two variable two variable okay 
and one is continuous news and another is discrete then we use box plot yeah. also box plot or histogram can help us to or histogram can help us to detect outlier okay so it can help us to detect outlier okay now we now we want to know like how much variance there is in the data okay so we can calculate variance even how much variance there is in the data so the formula for variance is s squared is x minus mu divided by m minus one and the standard deviation is simply square root of x minus mu divided by n minus one so how much variance is in the data we can simply use var dot s in Excel, for standard deviation, we can use std.s, okay? Even we can calculate by using x minus mu. So this is x minus mu. So mean, we have calculated mean. x minus mu whole square. Sorry, I didn't give here whole square. x minus mu whole, whole square divided by n minus one. So n is here 11. So 11 minus one is 10. Okay. So the more variance we have, that means the larger the variance, the more the data are spread out. Okay. So this one have, looking at this data set, in comparison to this data set, We can say this the variance here is 66 point something. And here the variance is 16 point something. Right? So here, here if we look at our data, so you can see here from 0 to so it has jumped from 0 to 24. Okay, and then again 12 and again 26. You can see the difference here. So your average mean is 14, right? But you can see the jump of your data from 0 to 24, 24 to 12, 12 to 6, 26, again 26 to 12. So here you can see the variance here between the data set is huge. That's why your variance is, the number is high. But if you see in this data set, your variance is not that high. 10, then 15, then 12.2, then 11, then 12. Then there is an abrupt increase here, but again it's decreasing. So here you can you will not see much variance in your data compared to this data set. That's why the variance here is low, but the variance here is high. Right? So why it is necessary to calculate variance is by looking at data, we can see that there is a variance, but we need to know how much variance there is, right? So for that, so we need to know the number, exact number, how much number the, the variance is. So that's why we calculate variance and we do square root so that the, the square root and this, this doing a square and doing a square root will cancel out. So generally we use standard deviation as our measure of dispersion. We generally use standard deviation to see the variance, to see the dispersion in our data. Okay. If that's variance standard deviation. Also, uh, also when we study, when we uh, go in next two weeks, like uh, why we use standard deviation, not variance is uh, the graph 
So you see here the normal distribution graph. All these graphs work on this of standard deviation. Okay, so the standard deviation is always given preference as in comparison to variance. Okay. Any question? I think you are muted. Oh, yes. Mm, Any? It's good so far, like uh, uh, too much theory classes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little, little bit not interactive, you know, right? So, uh, uh, we will be doing some by the yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, uh, we will, yeah, we are in last uh, one more topic, and then uh, you will have the practice uh, questions for all this. Um, okay, that will be fine. And we will be also implementing all this in R, R so, okay. okay. So right now just I'm explaining you how to do in Excel and all, yeah. and then we will move to R, or we will do all these things in R. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So the last one is so this is the last one. Okay. So so your number here ranges from like say it can be 24, 25, maybe 100 or maybe 200, right? So so. We need to have a fixed number, let's say a, a one to four or zero to five. So what JD score does is, this it gives a uh, standardized it standardizes your number. Like if your number is your number is in certain range, it it drops your range to minus one one to three. You can say like minus it, it drops your number high number to very low number. Okay, so that's what standardization we say standardization we say j score which is the formula is x minus mu divided by sigma so your if your number is very high okay so the number is standardized in a particular small range you can say so zero is now standardized to so the form we use the formula of x minus mean divided by standard deviation. Okay, so by using this formula, the number is being standardized. Okay, so once the use of standardization is it's been too much for you today, I think. Yeah, this theory part is been too much. So this is the last one. Okay. <laughs> so well, this is your mean. Okay. Center point is your mean. Mm -hmm. So uh, one minus mean, one plus mean. Okay. Two minus mean. Three minus mean. Two minus mean. Three minus mean. Suppose here. So, so if you standardize your data, okay, you standardize your value in JD score. What happens is your mean will always be zero. Okay. So if you have standardized this value. J D score. Okay. Now, if you look, if you take the mean of your mean of your J D score, oh, we don't have mean. <laughs> yeah, at this. So it's always zero. Okay. So your middle point, your mean with this will always be zero. Okay. Mm. So this 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 line represents your J D score. So overall, this this JD score, the overall value, this is hundred okay? percent. So from this part to this part, one standard deviation above and below is the sixty eight percent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Two standard deviation below is your ninety five percent, and three standard deviation below is your ninety nine percent. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. 99%. Okay. So, so anything that is above 3, because 1, 2, 3, above 3 is your outlier. Okay. So here we don't have anything that is above 3. Okay. Mm-hmm. So above 3, until 3, there is 99% of probability, but above 3 is, is your outlier. So one way of determining outlier is also through gene distribution. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, so going to Google and you see JT score. Six months, three months. So yeah, study this even because this is very important uh, as for your interview. Even uh, the JT score is very important. They often ask, ask so what is JT score. Okay. So go through this JT score even. And so one so thing to remember about JT score is your deviation part, like 68, 99, and 100 percent part. Mm, okay. okay. So if you even go in the JT. 68%, 68, 95%, We go here, if you look at this, even. So this normal distribution, so this distribution is also called normal distribution. Mm-hmm. Normal distribution, okay. So, so this is very important, okay. So, I would say you want to view this video. Okay. So now, so I want to, this is this this part will be your homework. Mm-hmm. So here we have data for schools and the average grade in the schools. Okay, so looking at this data, we need to what the, what does the distribution looks like? So we need to do a histogram, okay, and we need to do a histogram or box plot and see if you have any outlier or or if your shape is symmetrical or okay. So for this question, so this would be your homework. Check if check using histogram or box plot and C an object and C see okay see uh, whether it's symmetrical or left skewed or right skewed then mm-hmm. and then second one is uh, what is the measure of central tendency measure of central tendency means mean more than median Mm. Calculate that measure of dispersion means variance, standard deviation, mm. and, and interquartile range. Okay. okay. And uh, do a box plot, mm. calculate, calculate JD score, and find out whether there is some outlier in your data or not, whether there's some exception in your data or not. So okay. find find some exceptional value. Is, is there some exceptional value in your data or not? Mm. You need to find out that. Right. So this is your homework for next week. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, so have you installed R? Mm, yes. Okay. So let op- open R Studio. Mm, R Studio. Also, one thing I missed uh, to tell you is uh, so if your data is symmetrical,
So if your data is symmetrical, then this is this part, this part, this part. Okay. So this part is twenty five percent. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. So this one is a Q one. This one is Q two. This one is Q three. Okay. So this one Q one we will uh, we also consider this as twenty fifth percentile. I think you know this. Mm -hmm. And this is your fiftieth percentile. And this one is your seventy fifth percentile. Okay. Mm -hmm. To, to sum up, so to sum up uh, what, what we have studied, tell me from uh, from the start. <laughs> oh, two, three, four, five. Uh, so basically, uh, we, start, we started with uh, uh, statics, basic statics. Uh, so we started with the gra uh, diagrams. Like whether it's descriptive, uh, I mean, data um, data can be shown by diagrams that descriptive, and then so the, so first we started with descriptive, mm -hmm. then in uh, statistics, descriptive uh, statistics, and then inferential. Uh, this uh, descriptive versus inferential. Inference, yeah. Statistics, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, then? and then? And then we studied uh, level of measurements. Mm -hmm. Level of measurements, we studied, yeah. So, yeah. so what's, what's the level of measurement? Mm, there was a lot of things like <laughs> uh, variables and then yeah. nominal, 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 ordinal. ordinal. And then mm. categorical, oh, categorical, uh, continuous, continuous discrete. discrete. Yep. Okay. Then we studied difference between pie chart, um, pie chart and bar graph. And bar graph. Okay. Then we looked at histogram. Mm, histogram. And different shapes. Mm, yeah. Different shapes of Finished. histogram. Okay. And then. And then uh measure of variance uh, i mean um, before that mean median central tendency yeah central tendency Me measure. measure of central tendency then mm, then measure of variance measure of variance mm. then we discuss what score mm -hmm. Then box plot. Mm, box plot as well. Box plot versus uh, Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. Right. Mm. Keep all these things in mind because these are very basic and very important. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, have you opened your art studio? Mm -hmm. So nothing. What I did was like I I 
I install iStudio separately and then I found out that like I can do it in Anaconda as well. So I install with all the dependencies file from the computer and I, I installed in Anaconda. Okay, try to do now then. Sorry? Try to uh, install iStudio now. Okay. It wouldn't take time. Uh, no, no, no. I don't know why it's not working. Mm, yes. So let's start. Mm -hmm. So start with very basic uh, addition. So it's simple. Uh, the command to run is control enter. So here you can see the result three plus four seven. Power is four, power two. This cap denotes the power. So to declare a variable, we usually denote by arrow. So here it is a four. And if we look at X, so it's assigned to four. So instead of doing equals, we in R we do we denote through an arrow. Okay. So if suppose your A is one. Okay. 
e is is two. Then we do an addition, which a plus b, and we assign that value to c. Suppose if we declare a value, find value, and find a boolean value true and false. So to check uh, data type, we use to use class. Suppose class bracket. So Apple is numeric. Audience is character. And what is your logical operator? Yeah. Suppose if we assign string to a numerical value, so to convert string to numerical value, we has as dot numeric dot pair. This will convert your String to numeric. If we check uh, the type of bad, now it says numeric. So we can even do conversion, suppose integer as integer as dot integer. 4.5 before and as dot numeric To declare one one D array, so one D array or or vector, we start with C and we assign value. It was one ten eleven. It's similar to uh, creating a list in Python. List or array. So character underscore vector. Boolean underscore. If we do, if we give one, then this will give you the first value in your vector. If we give two, this square bracket, this will give you second value, and so on. Even in Boolean vector, we can specify that we need second and third. So it gives you the second and third result. Okay. 
now we will be using a default data set that we have in R. So in, in R we have default data set of empty cars. If we run this empty cars and if we look at head, head of empty cars. So this is the default data set that we have in R. Mm -hmm. okay. So here, if you can see, so right now we are looking at empty cars and the, this data set contains uh, the car information like uh, the MPC, how many cylinder this car belongs to, what's the displacement, what is HP horsepower, I think. Mm -hmm. So these are the information related to car, okay. Now in this data set, if we need to check for dimension, so we can use dim, D-I-M. This will, this gives me, this says we have 32 rows. So this data set contains 32 rows and 11 columns, okay? So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, right? So there's 11 columns and 32 rows in this data set, okay? So DIM, what this does is, it helps us to check dimension. Likewise, if we can do str to check structure, empty cars. Okay, so if we run this str empty cars, you can see like your first variable contains uh, have this values, cylinder has this values. So you can roughly see what value there is in each column. Okay. So this one is to check structure str so so if you want to check what's the unique value in this row in first column what's the unique value what unique value you have you can use unique bracket this is your table I can say this as a table and to access first column we need to give dollar and mpg okay so if you look at so these are your distinct value value in this column mpg column okay likewise we can even do table and Let's see what's there in gear. How many rows and rows, uh, how many value we have for, what's the frequency for four, three, unique gear. So if we give uh, empty cars, dollars, yeah, gear, this will give you the, un the value, like the gear three is, three gear has 15 records, okay? Fifteen records. Four gear has twelve records. Five gear has five records. Okay, so this gives you the record count of each value. Count of unique values. You can say. Okay. Now I want to convert. So my categorical, uh, my continuous variable is MPG. Let's say for example. Okay. So this is your continuous variable. So do you have these values? Now you want to convert this to categorical value and you want to add a new column that 
gives you an information. Uh, let's say if your MPG is less than, is greater than, suppose if your MPG is greater than, greater than equals to 20, you want to, you want to denote that with high, okay? So if your MPC is, is less than 20, you want to denote that with low. Okay. So how can you do this convert? How can you convert, uh, convert continuous variable to discrete? variable so so let's uh, create our backup table because this is is our main main table let's create a backup table uh, empty car cars 2 let's say this will create a backup of your main table okay now empty to empty car to at the rate uh, dollar your new variable let's say is mpc category okay category now your empty empty car to dollar your mpc if it is greater than equals to 20 then we assign this to high okay and so it is less than 20 we assign this to low so your syntax is uh your table name table name dollar uh new column columns bracket table name and the dollar and uh, existing column existing column columns uh, with condition yes then greater mm. than you can pass here condition and then you can do an assignment here to hard code high or low so this is your syntax. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's run and check if this is working or not. Yeah. Two dot head. Yeah, head. Okay, so we can see here so one column one variable is added so anything that is greater than 20 is high so we have converted the continuous variable to categorical variable okay. so if we if we check uh, the class the class gives you the type right so if you if we check the class of uh, the new variable that we have created So class is character, okay? But this should be, this should be category, right? So we need to convert this to a factor. So which will convert this into your categories, like because this is a category variable, we need to convert this into a factor. Okay. So NPC. So let's, let's add one new column. Category. So this will convert it, convert our data into factor. 
Okay, now let's check here. Okay. So now this is converted into active. Like I, I don't understand this one. Like, uh, because this uh, this column is your categorical, so it 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 should only be high or low, right? Mm -hmm. So right now, if you check this class, like it shows character, right? But this okay. needs, needs to be in category, like high or low. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have, we need to convert this into factor. Okay. Also like now, now this factor. Now if, yeah. This factor, if you check here, yeah, the class of factor. It says the factor. Okay. So, before, so why, before we um, we have to, we should have done like um, yeah yeah we can uh, we character but then now it's like a value but then in factor. In fact, uh, what does that mean is uh, mm, let's say for example let's say for example if you if you have a grading system if you have a grade let's say A B C D okay uh and right now if this is this is your character mm -hmm. character then then this will not recognize uh, like your a means highest b means like a means your 80 percent and above right mm. so b is your means like 60 to 80 c is less than so this will not rec if, if this is in character this will not recognize this as the highest uh, grid or lowest oh, okay. okay so if you convert this into factor now this will recognize that this a means the highest term highest value then it's b then c and then it's d okay oh, so, okay so this when we convert this high and low into factor then uh, the this is uh, character in the uh, factor uh, code like, like it yeah. has uh, really value like high means like more than 20 no it doesn't have any value but uh it's like now it's been grouped into two factor uh, okay. one high one low okay? Uh, okay instead of instead of being a character character means it looks for so it needs to be a character right uh, okay uh -huh. so if we convert that into factor now it's been grouped into two factors mm -hmm. high or low mm -hmm. okay, okay. So uh, we will discuss this in more detail in mm -hmm. Python. In right. Python, I will show you more examples. That's a good question because yeah, I was also confused uh, why we should be, we should convert this into factor. Initially, I was also confused. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's say let's say uh, we store the value of height. Height in one variable. Okay. So let's uh, let's include empty cars of AM. Now, if we do a bar plot of height, so here we can see like uh, which one is higher, which one is lower. So what does EM means? So your EM is, EM means whether your car is zero is Jedo says it's whether it's automatic, automatic, or one means it's manual. Whether your okay, car is automatic or manual, the AM says. Okay. So if we plot a bar graph, then we can see most of your car is automatic, right? Yeah. Frequency, highest frequency is 
is for automatic. So also we can do a histogram of, of uh, empty cars. Dollar. CRV. What is CRV? Let's check. Uh, so this is a no This is your number. Say CRV is is your car car number of carburetors. Okay. So looking at the histogram of car. You can see uh, it's like uh, skewedness. We can see right skewed, right? So this histogram is right skewed with two uneven value here. This two from five to six and seven to eight. This looks like an outlier, right? Likewise, we can calculate mean simply using MEAN mean of empty cars. So suppose MPZ can calculate the mean of by using mean command here. Simply using median to calculate median. I'm getting this error. Which uh, one? Empty cars to oh mm, duplicating these empty cars. I don't know why. Uh, I'm gonna try to enter this error of the empty cars to not found. So did you do first data this? Oh uh, yes. So oh, we have to do data. Yeah, yeah. To of that loads the file. Yes, I, I, I did it. First data, then heading. I tried unique table, and then I it's tried. It's it's working or not? Yes, it's working. And when I when I when I check class of empty cars, it's working. Mm -hmm. when I after, um, but then after duplicating this one, empty cars too, mm -hmm. it's not working. Okay, just want to share your screen. Um, yes. Can you enable it? No, oh, sorry. So here, when I, when I do this one, it's showing. It need to run. Uh, empty car is not working. Empty cars. Yeah, it's there. Yes, but then when I do empty cars too. It should run uh, that 17 line even. That line you have on run, I think. Up, upper one. Oh, okay. Oh, that's, that's how it works. Yeah. Oh yeah. no, it makes sense. <laughs> okay. Because because it didn't it didn't recognize empty car too. Uh, that's why first we need to recognize that. Okay. That's why this this was you had... oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. All good. Thank you. Hmm. So to get to tell you mean, we can simply use mean, median. Now to sort the column, we have 
sort option here sort empty cars to the rate let's say I want to sort in this is of pg then this decreasing should be false should be true sorry because uh, the sorted value will always be in decreasing order mm. so this is sorting so to calculate minimum value minimum value we can simply assign max and to do move empty cars at the rate dollar sign and pc value For maximum value, we can simply use max. And then we can calculate the range. Max minus min, y minus x. We can use quantile to calculate quantiles. We say how to calculate quantiles of Empty cars dollar to set so this gives you the lower quarter. This 25% means Q1, 50 means Q2, 75 means Q3. Box plot, we have box plot once some empty cars, Q second, yes. So, here we can see box plot, and there's one outlier. calculate 
Put into the water elements. We have IQR function. You said this gives you into a quarter of the range. So your GD score formula is x minus mu divided by standard deviation line. So we can we can do that calculation also here. Empty cars dollar mpg. This is x minus mean of this. X minus mu divided by standard deviation is ST. So, so is X minus mu divided by standard deviation. So, sign this to G score. Now we can plot the jury score. So this is the histogram after standardizing the value. Uh, Bisal, uh, I will be back in two minutes. Okay, I have one work to do. Okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm.
Hi, Bisal. Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, yeah. Did you try? Uh, yes, sir. I tried um, to sort in increasing order, but like it's showing some kind of error. So, yeah. Did it false here? No, I did true that, so. <laughs> It's still still showing an error. Yeah. Error okay. message. So yeah, you can see our screen. So it's not increasing equals. It's a decreasing. It's decreasing equals false. Oh, I mean decreasing equal false. Uh, I mean decreasing equals true will increasing. Yeah. Uh, let's <laughs> try it once. Try it once. Yeah. D E D E C R E A S I N G. C R E S I -E yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So let me know. So. Mm, yeah. Okay. So. so in JD score histogram, what we can see. So this this histogram looks symmetrical. What what do you say? No, not symmetrical. 
somehow symmetrical but then like no. uh, it's it's look something like uh let me go let's check Looks something like this, right? So this looks like a weight of right is skewed. Right is skewed, okay. Okay, so in week one, if you go inside crease, so if you download this document, then you will have all the equations uh, that you need to practice. Mm, okay. So that would be your homework. Statistics. Statistics week one. So yeah, that would be your homework for next week. Mm. And also in week one, I have the last seat. That that would be also your homework. Last seat means. Yeah. So. And the last seat of week one in the statistics uh, are. Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. In this one, that would be also your homework. So, okay, so I thought of uh, even starting Python, but let's do that tomorrow. Mm, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and revise all this topic like because you will forget uh, if you don't yeah. revise. Okay, revise all this topic and uh, come up with questions if you have. Mm -hmm. And okay. even I have shared you a few links. You can mm -hmm. try to view all that links that will give you more in depth knowledge mm -hmm. about uh, things and more bas basic things. It will clear up. Your basic. Uh, okay, then. Hmm, okay. So yeah, so that's it. I think. So the homework is your last sheet of Excel five. Excel mm -hmm. five and one quiz question. One quiz. Or statistics and even the hacker rank hacker rank uh, 10 questions I told you to practice mm -hmm. that is remaining and I will check your today's work okay uh, the one you have said sent me in Excel I will check that okay so if possible try to complete any one by tomorrow so that I can review by tomorrow if you can or oh this one yeah uh, okay. yeah out of this these three topic you can complete any one by mm -hmm. tomorrow mm -hmm. so if you do that then your memory will be like uh if you practice one or two questions then it's it's like doing a revision for you and mm -hmm. refreshing the topics like okay okay and okay so tomorrow for tomorrow, we will start with uh, Python, mm -hmm. and even in Tableau, we will start a bit of a very, very basic visualization. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay so that's it. Then let me stop the recording.